Welcome back all. Today we are going to compare the running efficiency using two different shoes at different running paces looking into some data collected by the heart rate monitor by Garmin. For who is new to the channel, I've been using the heart rate monitor by Garmin since a while. For my review video, you can find the link up here. And uh, this heart rate monitor strap includes also the running dynamics data. And today we are going to compare two important indicators, uh, which are the ground contact time and uh, the average vertical oscillation. But before to start, what does ground contact time uh, exactly mean? Well, it is the period of time between the first part of the foot touches the ground and the last part of the foot leaves the ground. As a baseline, it should be um, below 300 milliseconds. However, fast runners often have significantly lower uh, numbers in the 175-200 millisecond range. But why is it so important to know? Well, spending less time on the ground and more time in the air uh, help you to increase uh, your speed by reducing the braking effect caused by the overstriding. When training to improve uh, uh, your ground contact time, uh, you need to keep your vertical oscillation as low as possible uh, to be more efficient because excessive bouncing uh, wastes energy moving uh, your body Vertically. And therefore, here we come with the second indicator, which has been included today, the average vertical oscillation, which measures the average amount of uh, bounce, vertical up and down movement generated while running. Tracking vertical oscillation is uh, really about improving running efficiency by reducing wasted energy. Increasing cadence uh, will have significantly benefits in reducing bounce to a more appropriate level and therefore also the running efficiency. So, say that, let's move on. Uh, look into the simple test that I made. Basically, I did four simple tests, each one one minute, uh, at different paces that you can see here, from lower to faster paces. And uh, I repeated those tests for the two shoes, the Adidas Adidero RC2 and the S20. Let's start with the first two tests, the lower ones, test one and test two. As you can see here, this is how the times the millisecond which I got, which seems to be slightly different at the same pace using different shoes. Let's see which shoes brought these results. As you can see here, the SL20 has in both tests the short contact time, meaning I'm expecting we will have a higher vertical oscillation. Let's have a look. And actually, this is it. Looking to the vertical oscillation in both tests, the oscillation is higher uh, using the SL20. And what are these colors here in the, in the graph below? Uh, here you can find the colored zone, as Garmin has defined it, and actually when I started to speed up a bit the pace, I left the green zone, which should be the good one, to land in the orange zone. So looking to this data, it means that uh, for these two paces, uh, considering my running technique, the SL20 should fit a bit better than uh, the RC2, especially for the pace of test 2. Because even though the difference uh, uh, in the ground contact times, uh, both shoes are on the same range of vertical oscillation. But now I'm really curious to see the result of the other two tests, the faster ones. Let's have a look. These are the times that I got, and these are the shoes which brought these results. Well, first of all, we can see immediately that for both tests, the difference is much less than in the previous test. So it seems like um, when I increase the speed, the two shoes are close in terms of uh, ground contact time and therefore I'm expecting that the vertical oscillation will be pretty much the same. Let's have a look. And here there is something that surprised me because whether for the test 4 we have almost the same oscillation, for test 3 we have uh, a difference and it seems that the RC2 in this case for my running technique is a bit better more efficient because I have a shorter contact time and a smaller vertical oscillation. And here we have again the zone from Garmin and luckily even if the base was faster than previous tests, I was still in the orange zone. So which is the result in general of this quick comparison? Well, it seems that considering my running style, the harsh is uh, a bit better for a 6 minute 20 seconds uh, per mile, uh, which is 4 minutes uh, per kilometer pace. And the SL20 fits better for the basis of 8 minutes 0.2 seconds per mile, 
which is 5 minutes uh, per kilometer pace or for the pace of uh, 6 minutes 50 seconds per mile which is 4 minutes 50 seconds per kilometer pace Ample shoes are basically equivalent for uh, a pace of uh, 5 minutes uh, 54 seconds per mile meaning 2 minutes 40 seconds per kilometer As a second result, very important for me in average my ground counter time is ok because shorter than 300 milliseconds, but I need still to improve the cadence because I have too much vertical oscillation, especially when I increase the pace, uh, that is pretty much normal, and therefore I'm not so efficient uh, as I could. So that's it for today, guys. If you liked the video and you would like to see other comparison for other shoes, leave me a thumbs up. And if you want to see other videos on weekly basis, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and to be part of this great uh, community. Thanks for watching, stay healthy and see you soon on the next video. Bye!